According to the Supreme Court, the appointment of heads of public corporations were governed by Article 195 of the Constitution. The court held that their removal must be done in accordance with the terms and conditions of their contract of engagement, or it must be justified as stipulated in Article 191 of the Constitution. Article 195, Clause 1 of the Constitution gives the President the power to appoint public service officers, but with the advice of the governing board of this specific corporation given in consultation with the Public Services Commission. Article 191B states a member of the public service shall not be dismissed or removed from office or reduced in rank or otherwise punished without a just cause. The Supreme Court has by this decision repealed the section of the Presidential Transition Act 2012, Act 845, which terminated the appointment of chief executives or director generals of public corporations, statutory boards and authorities upon the assumption of office of a new president. Other members of the seven-member panel were Justice Professor Ni Ashikoti, Justices Jones Doche, Sulek Badigbe, Anthony A. Benin, Samuel K. Ma on 4, 2017 by a legal practitioner, Teoflos Donko, with Godwin Eduji Tamaklo as his counsel. Teoflos Donko invoked the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret the 1992 constitution. Let's now engage a labor consultant, Ben Arthur, for his perspective on this ruling. And thanks for your time, Mr. Arthur. So as a labor consultant, you have followed this issue where several CEOs are made to go home after change of government. Does the Supreme Court decision bring finality to the matter? Yeah, thank you very much. And good afternoon to all your viewers and your crew members. I think it does. And for a very long time, some of us have held this opinion for, for quite some time. And we argued it out last Saturday. Coincidentally, I happened to lecture a group of people, and I was citing some of these positions. It is good. In fact, when the, the Presidential Transition Act, in of that is Act 845, in Section 14, mentioned that when the there's an outgoing administration, all that continues of it goes with it and the rest. After that, referring to particular acts of parliament that have established public corporations which are not, you know, of commercial interest. So it's a very good judgment for all of us because why have we passed a law that says that the tenor of office, if you take NCIA, for example, there may be the tenor of office of for the governing board is four years. Assuming that they were appointed in, say, October 2017, why then may they all have to resign when there's a new administration? They don't have to resign. They have to continue until the act that established them and their tenure of office expires. So I think that the ruling approves what we have already agreed several in all the various acts of parliament that establish other corporations. No. So how will this impact on the implementation agenda of political parties, bearing in mind that governments have to work with persons they deem fit to work with? No, I, I, I do not think, uh, I don't think for this government, but let me tell you that if you look at the lines of thought of the sitting president, who is ready to let Ghanaians vote for their MNDC. I do not think that this serves a deal for any president or two. You know, we believe in the rule of law, and once the Supreme Court has got this ruling, it has to be complied with, you know. For me, we have done this over the years in error. Mm. We have done this over the years in error. And I'll give you a typical example. If you take an act of parliament that establishes a certain entity and give the tenure of office, and then they have the, the board has been duly constituted. What it means is that until other reasons arise for individuals to be dissolved, I mean, to be taken away from the board, they must serve their term. They must serve their term. And the, the, the provision in under Article 195 of the 1992 Constitution as amended. not the power of the president appoint. Uh, it didn't touch that 
that side because it's very, very clear. This one has to do more with the tenure of office of people who have been appointed. I'm also of the opinion that going forward, I think we should start as Ghanaian. We will have to take away one of these two powers that the, the one appointing the board should not be given the authority to appoint the mm. You know, that one too will be very, very helpful. But as we speak now, we don't have any contrary provision to that. So we keep on practicing that. But going forward, if we have the opportunity of amending the constitution, we need to do so so that CEOs will daily report to their boss. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And Ben Arthur is a labor consultant.